Well, hello out there in YouTube land. I am Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide and the co-founder of EnglishAnyone.com. And today we're going to continue our new little series here about the business of teaching and how to develop a teaching business or how to take an existing business and use education as a very big part of your marketing and the way you get you know, sales and make money and help people. Uh, so in the first video, we talked about market intelligence and the whole point of teaching, why it's such an important idea to do that. Uh, and in the second video, we talked about being number one in your market and why it's such an important thing uh, to do that as well. Again, if you have any questions about any of these, uh, feel free to post them on the most recent videos because if we start getting a lot more comments, it's uh, more difficult to go back and find those things. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying the series so far if you've been following us and welcome if you're new. In this video, what I'd like to talk about in general is selling. And this is just how to sell and, you know, trying to make money doing whatever it is you do. Because most people, you know, maybe they have something they love doing and they have, you know, a different job or something that they have to do to make money so that they can do this other thing they want to do over here. And if you can do the same thing, like me, I actually enjoy teaching a lot and I happen to get paid for what I do. So I'm uh, enjoying the life, as I like to say. I'm really um, happy to be helping people and to be earning money at the same time. Now, I know there are a couple of different groups that probably watch the uh, this series. Maybe one of them is teachers, so fellow uh, teachers. Maybe you're a teacher yourself. You're trying to teach online. Maybe you've never started. You've never had your own business before. Or other people, you've got uh, maybe learners that are just trying to improve their business English a little bit. All of the things we're teaching here, this is kind of a quick tip, a quick secret for people learning uh, business English. There isn't one specific kind of business English you have to learn. That's the secret. Learning to speak and sell well is the same thing for business as it is for convincing people to do anything. So it's more about learning psychology and understanding how people work than it is about learning, you know, a particular language or a particular set of words that you might use in an office. So keep this in mind, especially if you're a learner, that there's a difference between maybe, you know, you work as a lawyer and there are specific legal words or if you work in a factory and there's specific factory or electronic or engineering words you need to know, that is not business English. Business English is being able to communicate and to be able to express your ideas in a way that you can convince other people to do things. And so this could mean buying something from you or it could be maybe you want to convince someone to do things like they're in your own company, you're the company president and you have to tell all the people in the company, hey, we need to do this, like you've got a new marketing plan and you want to get people involved in that idea. So the only way to convince people to do that is to sell them on that idea, so to convince them to do something. So again, if you're a learner and you're just trying to learn some business English here, really the principles that I'm teaching in this series are important to learn, but just remember that there isn't a specific business English kind of thing that you have to learn in order Improve, uh, improve. Uh, and you know, be some more. Sp I can't even speak today. I don't, maybe I'm kind of tired. You know, I've got a new daughter, uh, and so I've been uh, having kind of an erratic. You know, this is the word. The word erratic means like up and down, different places. Uh, an erratic sleep schedule. So it's been kind of difficult, and I've been waking up in the middle of the night or taking naps in the middle of the day, that kind of thing. But that's beside the point. I don't want to get this uh, off track too much. But anyway, so we've got uh, kind of two different groups here that I want to talk about first. The first is the people that started to sell initially. Uh, so people that began by selling, maybe they have a business and they're watching this video right now to learn about the education side of that. And then you've got the educators over here that maybe they know how to teach well, but they don't actually know how to sell very well. And so they're kind of trying to put the selling in after that. So you got both of these things and ideally you can put them together where you know how to educate well and you know how to sell such that you can be very successful at what you do. You can become number one in your market. You can help a lot of people, earn a lot of money and just enjoy having you know a, a nice life like that it's actually a really nice experience if you can figure out how to do it but that's my job uh, and hopefully I can help you with that today 
So when we're talking about selling, I want to begin uh, talking about this by talking about the way I did it kind of incorrectly before and then talk about how I'm doing it much better, maybe not you know ideally or perfectly, I can always improve, but how it's a, a much different situation now from before. So I, if you're not familiar with me already, when I first started thinking about moving out from the classroom and starting to do my own thing, teach you know online through videos or making books, things like that, I created created a video or actually a book excuse me it was a book and a video uh, but mainly a book a picture mnemonic book and a mnemonic is just a way of remembering something uh, so is a picture mnemonic book for Japanese children to learn the English alphabet and it's actually a really great book because uh, you know it was able to help students in my classroom and really the kids enjoyed the pictures in the book and really enjoyed looking at it and that was able to encourage them to repeat and practice and learn the alphabet that kind of thing but the problem was I was really bad at selling it and when I say I'm bad at selling something it means a, a couple of things at least initially so I was bad at you know getting a group of people together that were already you know knowing about me and excited about the product and actually wanted the product and because I hadn't created that first creating the product after the fact you know it would have been a much better idea but what I did was the opposite so I did what most people do and this is again the the people that come from the the teaching side uh, they're really good at creating the product but when they have finished something like a book or a lesson or whatever that thing is they don't know how to get it out to people so if you're watching this video hopefully I can solve that problem for you in this lesson now if you're one of the selling kind of people you already know how to sell and you're looking more for education advice uh, hopefully you already understand some of these principles but it's a good thing to review anyway so what I did was I, I spent about two years learning how to make this book so I, I built the whole thing myself and I was trying to you know teach myself how to draw because you know I can kind of draw all right but this is a very specific style of artwork which was kind of little Japanese characters that I was trying to do so uh, kind of cute little cartoon designs and I had no idea how to draw in that style so I had to teach myself how to draw I created a publishing company I did all these things and I was able to put my book on Amazon where you can actually still find it today it's called Shabeti Sensei's Alphabet but because I didn't create a market for it beforehand and even though I'm solving the problem I didn't have like a, a group of people ready to purchase the product before I had created it I was you know really nervous about trying to find people to sell it to because I didn't want to push the product onto them um, and so that's what happens when you create a product first and then you want to go out and try to sell to people after the fact so this is where you know most people you know it could be even people that have you know a, a business currently that maybe could sell better and there's always ways to sell more effectively and to help more people but especially the people who are teachers that are nervous about selling so we'll kind of weave all these things together now uh, sometimes I like to go out uh, in my local area and there is a, a basketball hoop outside so I would go outside to the park and I would go around and like shoot on that and I would listen to audio books or other things like that just to kind of relax throughout the day and I remember going out one time and listening to a Dan Kennedy audiobook or it was a kind of not an audiobook but a presentation he was giving about selling and he spent maybe like two hours he actually spent two hours of this presentation talking to people and trying to convince them that selling was okay so you had all that you had actually actual people at this presentation so the people in the audience I'm guessing they paid to be there and so they were paying to learn this information but he was just really spending all the time telling them hey it's okay to sell to people and this is because we have such a uh, a bad idea of what selling is and people are trying to you know kind of do lots of I don't know I guess it's really the the impression that people have of selling and again this goes back to the the previous video where I was talking about about uh, being number one in your market the idea that comes to mind when you think about search is Google for most people you know especially like living in America I'm gonna search for something I'm gonna go to Google so the idea of searching for something the first in mind is Google in the same way that most people think about okay I want to sell something but what's the idea that quickly comes into my mind when I think of selling oh it's like a used car salesman and somebody like I've got a picture of him with like a bad suit on and slick back hair and just not somebody I want to deal with so when you see that person 
oh no, it's gonna be a sales presentation and I don't wanna deal with that right now. So because selling itself has such a bad reputation, it actually stops a lot of people that have good information. So maybe that's you out there. Maybe you've got a great course or something like that that you'd like to sell to people, but you're feeling a little bit nervous about it. You really don't wanna sell something or you know, for whatever reason, you don't wanna push that idea on to people. So uh, that idea about Dan Kennedy, I just thought that was really funny. I actually stopped listening to it because it wasn't teaching people how to sell anything. It was really just saying that selling is okay. And one of the ideas he gave is that like, well, if you don't sell them something, somebody else will. And I, I don't want to teach you that. That's really a bad way to look at it. And that's still the same kind of idea of push selling. And Dan Kennedy is great. He's got a lot of great ideas about how to write sales copy and other things. So there's definitely something to learn from him. But this idea of how do we kind of trick people or to tell them that selling is okay, that's not what I want to do. I actually want to show you that like it is, in fact, a, a really great thing. And you can do something fantastic for other people while ensuring your own livelihood. You know, you can produce money for your yourself and do whatever it is you want to do with that money while you're able to help people at the same time. So it seems like a really great idea for me. It's uh, obviously a worthwhile thing. A lot of people enjoy even just to use my uh, my channel right now as an example. So we have a bunch of people that enjoy the videos, but we receive, you know, some like a small amount of advertiser revenue and we get a lot of money from people that really enjoy our courses. So if you can create a situation like that where you're not like pushing anything onto anybody, but you're actually pulling them towards you, then there's no real selling involved because people are actually like, please take my money, please take my money. And they're the one that are being, uh, you know, the, the customers or the people you want to help are the ones that are being pulled to you. So to go back to my previous example about the book, so I spent all this time making something, but I didn't spend any time on the actual marketing side. And this term marketing is a very kind of general term, but it just means talking to your market. It means communicating with them and it's a feedback loop. So I ask them questions and they tell me things and I try to look at them and figure out what they need. And, you know, I try to make something and see what happens. And so there's a lot of trial and error. It's actually a lot like language learning. You know, you're, you have certain ideas about something, but you actually have to get out and test things and maybe something will, you know, work well in one situation, but not work well in another. So anyway, uh, if you do the opposite of what I did wrong, and that's what I do now, I do the opposite of what I do, uh, what I did wrong before, uh, that's how you can actually pull people towards you and you don't have to worry about selling anything. So right now I'm going to speak specifically to those people out there that maybe they want to get into teaching uh, or they're already a teacher, but you know, they want to have a course or something like that to actually make some money doing what they do. The first thing you have to do is not create a course. You really have to be the kind of person that even though it's kind of comfortable for you to maybe do your own thing and to sit by yourself. I know I really enjoyed making the book and drawing the pictures and doing all those other things. And the reason it was fun for me to do those things is because I had complete control over that situation. So I can draw the pictures how I want to draw them. I can do everything my own way or create my own company my own way, that kind of thing. But in the situation where you're wanting to sell something, ultimately you want to be able to produce something that other people want, you really need to involve other people in that process. So the more you can uh, involve the people that are going to buy the thing from you from the very beginning, the more that will become number one, uh, a group of people that will help you design a great product. But number two, those will be the people that actually buy it. So again, instead of just making something by yourself where you're spending all of your time working on something and then you release it, even if it's awesome, even if you think it's the best thing and actually if it is the best thing, if there's no market waiting for it, then it won't matter. So the people that are really great marketers, they actually don't begin with a product. They begin with a group of people that are hungry for something and it's usually a problem they want to solve. And so in my situation, what I do as an English fluency guide, all I do is I speak with people and find out what are their real core problems? What are the things that they really struggle with? The things that they're staying up at night about, you know, they have to think about things, they can't sleep or they can't make progress in their life because they have these, you know, certain things like not being able to speak confidently or they have to pause and think and translate in their head and it's really frustrating for them. So how can I talk with them and then work with them to create something 
that's really helpful for them. So there's no need for me to push anything on anybody else. If you begin selling something and you begin working on something with other people, the people that will ultimately buy the product, that's where you actually create something special. And when you release it, you've got people waiting there, right there to, uh, to purchase it for you. Now I want to take you kind of to the, the highest level of this and you'll see uh, quite a few people doing this now. Mainstream people don't really talk about doing this. There's still a lot of talk about creating a, a marketplace where you, let's say you have like a blog or something like that. You keep creating all these articles and you try to create an audience first and then you build something after that. Now you could do that, but in my opinion, it's a little bit slower and you can get a lot more traction. This means you can know more quickly whether something you're producing is actually being helpful or not. And you only really know if something is being helpful if people are willing to give you money for it. If you produce something and people think, wow, that's great. And you say, hey, if I made this, would you pay me money for it? And they say, oh, of course, like that's not accurate data. Most people would say, oh, of course, I'd be happy to pay for that. But then when you produce the product and you show it to them, they say, oh, well, uh, actually, I didn't need that as much as I thought I did. So whenever you're in a situation where you're trying to produce something like you're, you're trying to make uh, all this content like YouTube videos or blog posts or, you know, anything like that, where you're trying to create content, it's a much better idea if you can start doing something where you're working to get paid first and then that way working with a group of people that you know is actually interested in something like that. So I'll give you a, a very good example from my own business. I created the visual guide to phrasal verbs because number one, I'm really good at producing, uh, showing grammar in a visual way so people can see how it works. I actually have a uh, beginning grammar it's called Beginning English Grammar, I believe, a channel uh, playlist right on our channel. And you can actually see more about how I teach grammar without giving so many explanations about it. It's more about showing how the grammar works. But I wanted to do something at a higher level and phrasal verbs are one of the most important things in spoken English. If you're a native English speaker watching this, a phrasal verb is something like pick up or put down. These are the conversational you know, groups of words we put together. And I didn't know what a phrasal verb was before I started started using them or before I started teaching them you know as a teacher many years ago uh, but it's funny that you know I'm using them every day but I don't know what they are so that's you know the kind of typical native situation but anyway I wanted to create something like that where I could have um, a course for people that would give them a way to learn lots of words so really you can learn the principles of phrasal verbs and start teaching yourself thousands of phrasal verbs uh, using this uh, method that I teach in the program but before I made the program, I wanted to make sure it was something people were interested in buying. So if I couldn't sell the program, it means that maybe it's a good idea and maybe it could be a YouTube video or something, but it wouldn't be worth my time to create that as a course by itself. So what I did was I said, okay, I have an idea for this and I have, you know, a group of people that are on my list and I explained about what this list is in the first video. This is where really you're just, again, contacting with a market and getting them to, to give you feedback and information so that you can help them solve their problems. But let's say I have a group of like, you know, 200 people, something like that on this list. And I explain to them, hey, I've got this really good idea that solves this problem. So one of the, the big problems that people have is not being able to use conversational English the way a native speaker would. So because they've learned things from a textbook, it sounds a little bit weird when they actually start speaking in conversations. They don't sound natural. So phrasal verbs will help a non-native speaker sound more natural. So I said, well, here's the problem. The problem is you can't really speak very well and you're not sounding natural because you're learning all of this textbook English, which is still English, but it's just not the same thing that will help you sound natural and help you speak more confidently in actual conversations. So that's the problem. And the solution is to learn this principle and the way to learn a whole bunch of phrasal verbs so you can sound more natural and speak more confidently. So it's a very simple idea. And I said, I'm really great at producing this. So we have the problem. 
we have the solution and why I'm capable of producing something like that. So we've got these three parts, this like magic triangle or whatever you want to call it, but it's a very simple thing of here's the problem and here's the solution, but we also need to know why I'm the one that can provide that for you and why you can't get it anyplace else. So if I can look at my house, you know, maybe I have like a, a broken pipe or something like that. I can see that the problem is a broken pipe, so we're getting water inside the house, and the solution is to fix that. That, but I'm not the one to fix that problem so I can't really help with that but I know how to you know call a plumber and get someone in to fix the problem for me so in this case again you want to demonstrate before you've actually made anything you have an idea that's a solution to a specific problem but again it's something that you specifically can solve and why you can solve it and what I explain is that like I want to help you Show, I want to show you how these phrasal verbs work, but pretty much everyone that shows phrasal verbs just gives you lists of them. So pick up means this and put down means that. But I wanted to show you how they work visually, like the origins of the word. So as an example, uh, the origin of the word hang up when we're talking about a telephone. Now, as the language evolves, we still use a lot of old expressions that we don't use anymore physically. So we don't actually hang up a phone like we used to so maybe on your wall you would have a, a physical phone that was hanging maybe you know when I was a, a kid I had a phone hanging up on the wall but most people now when they're finished talking on the phone they push a button but we still use the same language even though the, the physical you know the language evolves but we still have the you know the kind of uh, physical function of turning a phone off or disconnecting the phone that's what's actually happening but the way we do it is different but the interesting thing is that the way we explain that remains the same. So this can be really tricky for uh, especially younger non-native speakers who don't know what hanging up a phone means. They just know, oh, I push a button on my phone and I turn it off, or I put it down on the table and I turn it off. So I wanted to show how this works visually. And I've got a whole bunch of videos on YouTube that already demonstrate that I'm really good at explaining how grammar works without actually, you know, I just kind of show how it works without actually explaining a bunch about it. Uh, and so I was able to produce a course, but not before I was able to accept money for it. So I said, here's the problem, here's the solution, and here's why I can provide it for you. Here's why I'm the person you would get this from and not someplace else. So we know phrasal verbs are important and they'll help you sound native, but if you learn them from a book, you're not going to hear the pronunciation and you're not going to remember them as easily because you're not seeing them visually. You're just seeing a, a visual example and or a, a written example of something. So since phrasal verbs are verbs and they are something that should be moving around, it's really just best to see them visually. So people like the idea. And then I said, hey, uh, I'm going to produce this course, but only if people are interested enough to start buying it now. And if I get, you know, a certain number of people that are willing to buy the course, like 100 people or something like that, then I will actually produce it. So the simple way for you to do this, maybe this is your first time doing something like that, you would just have a PayPal button and you would just say, hey, uh, if I have like at least 100 people buy this program for like a very reduced amount, so I, you know, the final course is now $97, but I sold it the first round of being able to sell the course, I just said, hey, if you buy it now before the course is actually produced, you can have it for just $7. So they had to wait, but you know, they're kind of banking on me to produce what I say I'm going to produce. Now, obviously, you have to have trust with the people that you've been developing, you know, a, a relationship with, and that's how you can begin selling something before you actually produce it. But I guarantee you, you will take a lot more time and effort to nurture that relationship because that relationship, again, it's what produces a great product but it's also that what produces the group of people that will buy things from you uh, when you get them produced so it's a really great situation where all these learners can benefit from me producing something that each one of them, you know, I wouldn't make a product for one person individually. Uh, and if I did, it would be much more expensive for that one person. But because each of these people puts in a little bit of money, I can then finally make something that everybody can enjoy and I can, you know, receive the money as a result of that. So everyone wins. So in these situations, when you work to produce something with the market, so you say, hey, I've got this. Again, I 
I want to show you this, this like triangle idea of like, here's the problem, here's the solution, and here's why I can produce it for you. And assuming all these things are correct, like you don't just pick like a random problem that people don't really have. Obviously, the, the more intense, the more painful the problem, the more people are willing to pay for that thing. And that's kind of a separate video, but you get the idea of that. Uh, so anyway, man, I'm going on and on about this, but again, I really want to make sure you understand this because it's such a, a simple idea. So let's say I'm the kind of person that I'm really nervous about selling. So I'm going to go back to my book example. What I would have done had I like been smart about it and be thinking about it the way I'm thinking about it now is I would go to my particular audience and I would say, hey, you know, your parents or whatever, your teachers that are looking for a way to help your children learn to read. And so I've produced, you know, this like uh, separate uh, or I'm thinking about producing this kind of thing and here's how it works and here's how it solves the problem and here's why I'm the person that's able to produce this for you. And if they say, oh, that's awesome and I have a good relationship with them, then I say, hey, if you're really excited about this thing, would you be willing to pay me first and I'll give you a really good discount on the product. So you can't get it now, but you're also part of like, you know, the original founders or whatever that helped produce the product and you know it's like part of your name is in that, you know, whatever, you can offer various bonuses. It's kind of a similar thing that you see on Kickstarter now. So you've got a whole bunch of people that contribute certain amounts of money and you know whatever they contribute they get like a special bonus or something else, you know, whatever that is. So what I do is a little bit different from Kickstarter. I'm actually just looking for people that are specifically willing to buy the thing right now uh, and I know if there are buyers like that, then I can start producing the product and I know I'll be able to sell it to future people as well, as long as it's not just one person that's willing to buy something. Usually if you can get like 10 people to buy something, you can get a lot more people to buy that thing, especially if it's in like a, a pretty good market because a lot of people are having the same problems. There's only maybe like five real problems in the English speaking market, you know, how you learn how you sound and you know how you can listen that kind of thing I'm just being very general about this but a lot of people have the same problem because they were all learning the same traditional way so they were learning in a way that didn't help them speak properly so now they have to relearn how to actually speak the language and speak it confidently so that's what I do so I help them speak confidently but again it's a process of revealing something to people saying you have this problem and then I can show you how the solution would work because most people don't know what the solution would be that's why they're looking for it and then you say I'm the one that can provide you uh, provide you with that solution because of X reason so maybe you're really talented at what you do and again it doesn't matter what the market is it's it's the same thing for every market so like I'm like really good at removing stains I have a like you know a, a dry cleaning service or something like that so your problem is this stain and I have a you know special powder or something that can remove that and the reason I can do that is because I've been destroying stains for the last 50 years or whatever and like I know how to do it in an environmentally friendly way or you know whatever that thing is and if you're interested in that don't don't ask people if they're willing to buy money actually put a buy now button on that thing and all you have to do if maybe like only five people purchase it and you you thought like many more would buy it just refund the money so if uh, if people you know maybe you were hoping that a hundred people will buy something but only like two people were interested and it's not enough for you to get excited about then just say you know I'm sorry here's your money back um, and you know people might be a little bit disappointed but it's you know a lot better to do it that way than to spend a whole bunch of time producing something that people won't really be interested in so if you especially want to make money if that if that's really like the point of this you know you want to help people but be able to make money for your time I mean a lot of people can sit around and make videos for people but the reason I'm able to help so many people is because I get paid for it now I ask to be paid for things because if I'm able to make money, it means I don't have to have a separate job doing something else so that I can be teaching on the side, something like this. So maybe you think like, you know, English teaching should be free or education should be free, something like that. But the only problem with that is that if I am not receiving anything from my time, then I have to find some way to make money in some other way, whatever that way is. But that's taking more time away from what I do. So because I'm able to get paid for what I do, I can focus on it. 100%. And so that's why, you know, I'm again grateful to all of the great learners out there, whether you're just watching this video because you enjoy learning with me or because you want to improve your English or whatever, or you're actually trying to learn about a business or improving that uh, aspect of what you do. 
thank you very much. It's a, a pleasure to be able to uh, help you with that. And because you're watching this video right now, you're actually supporting me at the same time. So it works great and we get to comment back and forth and talk about things and who knows, maybe even this, you know, this series of business lectures or lessons or whatever will become, you know, a similar kind of course in the future. And the way I would do it, I would say, hey, you know, I've got this list of people that are interested in learning about that. So what are your specific problems, just like we talked about in the first video? And I want to get more information from people where I'm asking them, okay, what are your problems? What are the things that, you know, you'd really like to be doing with this? And so they explain to me that. And then I get that information and say, oh, you know, I think about it using my, you know, personal experience and the expertise that I have in this area because I've had success in business so far. And I can say, oh, all you have to do is this. So you have to change these few things. So I've got the problem and I've got the solution. And the reason I'm able to help you with that is because I've got experience doing it myself. And then that's all we do. And I'm sure quite a few people, they would say, oh, I'd be happy to give you some money if you would explain how to do that. And I would say, sure, here's a really great discount. And then that's how it works. So there's no pushing involved in that. You've got, you've got two people that are working together to create a solution for something. But usually the people that have the problem, they don't know how to solve their own problem. And that's why they ask someone else to help them how to do it. So like a great uh, example, maybe this is true, maybe it isn't, but in business, people talk about Henry Ford. I'm pretty sure it was Henry Ford, so the, uh, the automobile manufacturer. So when he was asking people like, you know, how do I talk to my market and find out what they're interested in? He's saying like, well, I don't talk to my market at all, really, because if I talk to them and I say, you know, what would you like? And this was back many years ago when the car was starting to replace the horse, but there were still a lot of horses around. So people would say, oh, I'd love to have a faster horse. So if he says, oh, how would you like to get to work? Like, what would you need right now? They say, I need a faster horse. Nobody's thinking about how to solve the problem with an automobile of transportation. How do you move around? So if you ask people what they want, they're probably not going to give you a good answer. But if you ask them what their problem is, that's a much easier way for you to think about solutions because that's your job. You are the solver. You are the problem solver. And then that way, you can actually, you know, produce something with them and show them maybe how to do something in a way that they didn't really think about before. So an English fluency guide myself, like that's a very new thing for pretty much everybody. And so when people say I've got these problems with fluency, I can say, well, you could do this and this and like the kind of typical things. Maybe you're trying to read more or write more or do other things. But really what you need if you're in this situation where you can't really express yourself fully. It's like you're kind of at this level, but you've stopped. You can't get much higher. The reason is because, and most of these people don't see it, but the reason is because you need to change the way you learn. You actually need to kind of unlearn these bad habits and start creating these new good habits over here. So again, that's how you do it. This is how you think about selling in a smart way where you're not pushing anything on anybody. You're just trying to help people and show them that actually you can provide them a solution because you've got the particular expertise to do that. So whatever that thing is. And remember, this is just my last point about this, that you don't need to be you know, way better. You don't need to be way more experienced. I mean, I make like a good amount of money, but I'm not like a multimillionaire yet. Not yet. I'm getting there, but not yet. But uh, I don't have to be like way ahead of the person in order to help them do something. I just need to be at a higher level than they are. So you don't need to worry about like, well, I need to be like a, an expert with 30 years of experience and whatever. Like the person looking for the solution doesn't care about that. They just want the solution to their problem. So if you can be just one higher step up than them. And they say, oh, like, you know, like, let's say I, I only make a thousand dollars a month, let's say. And uh, I don't need to talk to a millionaire. I just need to talk to someone who makes two thousand dollars a month and say, hey, how did you do that? How did you do that? And the two thousand dollar a month guy says, oh, I did this. And so he helps me move up to his level. That's it. And I continue to do that until I learn and move up to like higher and higher levels. So that's all you need to do as a person that's offering advice. And you can see looking at this video, I'm like literally sitting in my bedroom and this is just a very uh, basic video I'm shooting. So this is not the Transformers movie where I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't need a whole bunch of experience and equipment. You just need to be able to solve the problem. And really just that means having a little bit more experience than the person struggling with the problem. 
anyway well i hope i haven't talked to you too much if these uh longer videos or something that you do enjoy please let me know i know some people especially on youtube people get to watching a video and you know they start clicking it's really easy to, oh look at that cat video over there and i'm going to look at that other thing but you know hopefully it's been uh, entertaining for you if you i'll put the uh, link again on the upper let me see should be the upper right of your video uh, of your screen uh, but you'll see a little icon it's a little circle with an eye in it and you can click to ask more questions about um, you know business information if you're interested in that and maybe we'll see maybe we develop a, a course out of this or something but I've you know just for now been enjoying sharing the information and I hope you're uh, using it and developing you know something good you know out of it if you have specific questions, it would be nice to do some kind of case study things. A case study is where you take a particular example, like this business did it in this way. I try to share some of those for my own business, but maybe you want to have more information about something. Um, but if you're, you know, you can show me how you think, like maybe an idea you have for your own thing, something like that. Let me know. And I hope you get out there and enjoy selling more. It's actually like, a, it's really just a way of solving problems. And instead of thinking about selling stuff, which again has kind of like a dirty a dirty word and it's kind of a dirty idea and that's because most of us again the the dirtiness of it is the first thing in mind when you talk about selling you want to think about educating people and you want to think about solving problems well that's it for this video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one give this uh, video a like subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when new videos are available and i'll see you next time bye bye if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel for more than 250 free videos that will help you improve your English fluency and speaking confidence. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to know when new videos are released, and it's 100% free. Click on the subscribe link in this video or in the description below this video to subscribe to the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel.